Welcome to Business Connection. I'm Liz Spencer. We have a fascinating guest in studio. It's Nicole Dawson, and she's a pediatric neuropsychologist with the Dawson Neurobehavioral Group. Welcome, Nicole. Good morning. Good to see you. Tell me, what is a neuropsychological evaluation? What is that? That sounds like a mouth. It is a mouthful. It is a mouthful for sure. Um, a neuropsychological evaluation is completed by a neuropsychologist. A neuropsychologist is a subspecialty in the field of clinical psychology. So I had to get my clinical psychology degree uh, and then go on to subspecialize in neuropsychology. So neuropsychology is the understanding and the scientific study of brain behavior relationships. So a neurologist uh, studies the structures of the brain. Mm -hmm. A neuropsychologist will study the functions of the brain and how um, brain development and abnormal development might affect um, behavior and cognition. Um, so a neuropsychologist has had a lot of specialty training in the brain and the central nervous system. Wow. So, and you're, you're specialized even further with being in pediatrics? Correct. Wow. Yes. Yes. A lot of schooling for you. Yes. I, I went to school for 12 years after I graduated high school and then an additional two years of uh, uh, postdoctoral fellowship, so about 14 years after high school. Wow. Yes, a lot of, a lot of school. Good. I like school. That's okay. Um, how can this evaluation help a child? Who, who are you seeing? A, a neuropsychological evaluation helps uh, teachers and parents better understand a child's learning style. Um, why they may be struggling. Um, it will help to better understand their aptitude. What are they? What is their potential? A neuropsychological evaluation may also um, identify a diagnosis to help guide treatment, um, or document a diagnosis to access services, for example, through the school system. And, and oftentimes, when a child is struggling, the school might do an evaluation. Correct. How does that differ from the evaluation that they might get with your group? Correct. A school evaluation is completed to identify whether the child meets criteria for school services. Um, it's typically not nearly as comprehensive as a neuropsychological evaluation, and it's not designed to understand um, why a child is struggling, or, or um, it's not designed to, for example, um, identify a diagnosis. So um, it will identify, for example, if a child may be struggling in a certain area, but it doesn't identify why. Right, so I might be struggling in reading, but I might not understand that I'm dyslexic. Exactly, right. that is a perfect example, and that's an area of my particular expertise. Excellent, so what, t what type of, of disorders or problems do you help parents figure out with their child? Uh, I see a lot of, a, a wide range of, of referral reasons. Mm -hmm. um, anything from identifying aptitude and giftedness to identifying uh, learning disabilities or attention differences to um, identifying how a particular neurological disorder or brain injury or concussion, um, seizure disorders might be affecting a child's um, behavior, social, emotional functioning, learning abilities, things like that. Wow, and when this is, I think for a parent, a little bit of a scary time when they're thinking their, their child needs to go to the next level of care or evaluation, what types of questions should a parent be asking when seeking someone of your skill level? First of all, you want to make sure that uh, the neuropsychological evaluation is being completed by an actual neuropsychologist. So there's a, a misunderstanding that a neuropsychological evaluation uh, is the administration of neuropsychological tests, for example. Um, but the test is only so good as the person interpreting the test. Right. So you want to make sure that it's a neuropsychologist. Um, who has a specialty in pediatrics. So there's a lot of neuropsychologists that are generalists. Um, I firmly believe that um, to evaluate appropriately a child or adolescent that you want to see someone who specializes only in children and adolescents because the range of uh, presentations and diagnoses and concerns that are presented to me as a pediatric specialist are very different than the expertise of an adult neuropsychologist, for example. So I don't have a, you know expertise in dementia, for example. I would never want to see an adult who I have to decide, is this um, a mental health issue, is this a dementia issue? The, the, the key thing is um, the expertise of the 
person being able to differentiate between what is causing um, that child or adolescent's particular uh, areas of challenge um, and, and to differentiate between different diagnoses. So, so they, um, a parent comes, you know, they bring the family comes to see, so you, you do these evaluations, so you, you figure it out, then what happens? That's an excellent question because that to me is the key to the professional that you are seeing and one of the major questions you want to ask. From my standpoint, that is only the first step in the process. It's not the final step. Mm -hmm. The diagnosis, and not even importantly the diagnosis, really just the identification of your child's particular areas of strengths, um, challenges, learning style, that drives then the roadmap that is developed after that. So from my standpoint, um, the ending of the testing portion of the evaluation is really the beginning of uh, the plan and moving forward. So I spend a great deal of time with parents um, in a final meeting, two to four hours sometimes, um, discussing where do we go from here. Um, and not only where do we go from here, but how to equip and arm parents with um, expertise in their child's challenges, um, arm them with the ability to advocate effectively for their child, both with other professionals as well as through the school system. Um, I spend a lot of time uh, helping educate parents on their educational rights, how to access an IEP or a 504 plan. I also spend a lot of time um, with families whose child may already have an IEP, but maybe it has not been sufficiently effective to date. So how do we modify that based on this new information we have about a particular child um, to help uh, tweak the educational and treatment planning to better meet the child's needs and foster growth and progress? That's wonderful. And, and how long is a, once from diagnosis, how long is a family with you? Do you stay with them? I mean, do you see them grow up? I, I do. In, in, in a perfect world, I get to do that, and that's the best part. Of, one of the best parts of my jobs. Um, I have some children I have first evaluated at the age of four, and I get to see them off to college, um, which is wonderful. I have one particular child that comes to mind that at the age of four was being told, um, the parents were being told that their child should go in a life skills path and that they would never uh, go off to college and live independently. Um, she's currently um, at a very prestigious college right now um, because I identified that uh, she had a multitude of learning differences, but the cognition and intelligence was there. We just needed to address the learning differences. Um, so th I, I'm with families as long as they need me. I, and I bet, I bet when families see that, it's just wonderful that, to get to the right person to get that diagnosis and be able to, uh, you know, to be successful with their child. What's the best part of your job? Is that, you, is that it? Or yeah, well, well the, the best part really is working with different kids every day. I, I, um, I mean, there's nothing better than sitting down at my desk every day with um, different children and adolescents and families. Children are very resilient. Uh, um, you know, I, like I said, I see children from all walks of life, and it doesn't matter what, um, what is going on. There's always a positive side to that, and it gives, I, I come from a strengths-based approach mm -hmm. in working with children and families. I don't see, for example, dyslexia or ADHD as being a negative thing. Um, I think it gives gifts as well as challenges, and so the key to my job is finding out what gifts and assets um, is that providing the child and how do we leverage that to foster success for kids and, and so the best part is just getting to see all these kids and helping them achieve success in their efforts each and every day. That's wonderful. Well, you bring such hope, and I think that's Thank you. that is a wonderful gift that you bring everybody. So thanks for stopping by and telling me a little bit about this fascinating world that you live in. Thank you. I appreciate you having me. Not at all. We're going to be right back with more Business Connections. Stay tuned. <laughs>